I want every one of you to read the Bible, especially the daily readings. Again, you can get them from usccb.org. Sign up, throw in your email, and read along with every other person, hopefully, that is reading the readings today. So happy Lord's Day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And I remember reading the builders rejecting the cornerstone years ago in my early journey. and I had no idea what that meant. I do now. And I remember in my early journey, I needed help interpreting the Bible. For those of you who do not really know the full Bible, when I'm talking the full Bible, I'm talking the Old Testament and the New Testament, find Father Mike Schmidt's Bible in a year. Listen to it every day. The church, the Catholic church, the church handed down by Jesus, remember, all of the other Protestant and Evangelical and Baptist faiths did not come until 1,500 years after Jesus. The universal church, which is Catholicism, has been there since Jesus handed it on to Peter. And there's a governing body, just like it was with the Old Testament and the high priests in the Jewish practice. We need to govern it. We need to govern everything that God says so that we can know what God is telling us. That's why, unfortunately, we have so many different interpretations of the Bible and we're interpreting it in English when we should be interpreting it in Greek because our words are not the same. This is why you can have some people say, well, this is what this Bible passage means, and others say, no, this is what it means. And a lot of times they are taking the Bible verse out of context, just saying, boom. You know, some people say, oh, we're saved by faith alone. We don't need to do works. That's not true. If you read the verses before and after, it says completely the opposite. We are called to change. We are called to live a virtuous life. We are called to do what God commands, not just suggests. Just because you believe doesn't mean you can go out there, commit adultery, rob, steal, pillage. You know, that's not how it works. But we also don't earn our way to heaven. God loves us no matter what we do. And if we're repentant and have a humble and contrite heart and turn back toward him, He's going to pour grace in our life so that we can turn away from those sinful habits and behaviors. So I remember reading the builder rejecting the cornerstone and I had no idea what it meant. Today, it was so clear. I mean, I've I've known this forever. Yes, Jesus is the cornerstone. But right after, there is no salvation through anyone else nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are saved. And I had to sit with that for a while and say, wow, thank you, God, for this faith that I didn't earn, that you gave to me. It was a gift. And with this faith, I turn toward you and I know that you are God and you can do anything, especially in my life. So then I read the responsorial psalm. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust princes. So I had to say, okay, I hear you, God. You are speaking to me that I need to turn to you. While I am contemplating and trying to find out and figure out and plan this retreat home, I need to turn to him and pray through everything. Let him be my guide. By the way, 
I am now praying again the surrender rosary. So the first decade, you say, Jesus, take over before every Hail Mary. The second decade, you say, Mother Mary, guide me. Third decade, back to Jesus. Jesus, take over before every Hail Mary. Fourth decade, Mother Mary, guide me. Fifth decade, Jesus, take over. I'm telling you, the peace that comes to me while just saying those small words to both Jesus and Mary who are sitting together pouring out grace and healing people up there in heaven is incredible. It's physical, it's spiritual, it's mental, it's emotional, it's amazing. So again, I need to turn toward God to take my refuge in him, not in man, not in princes. Of course, I don't know any princes, but you know what I mean. Not in the people who are in worldly positions, And especially not people who do not have Jesus in their life. Okay, then we get (laughs) to the gospel of John chapter 10, 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. As I sit here and battle this money struggle in my mind, I am building this retreat home so that Jesus and his blessed mother can heal people from their sins, from their lack of forgiveness, from anything that's going on in their life, from their sadness, their loneliness. This is what it's about. I have to care and love those sheep through Jesus and Mary. And remember that I'm not doing this to be paid. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I'm going to have to be paid in order to keep up the operations and all of that stuff. And I don't even know what that is. But I'm not doing it for me to make money. You know what I'm saying? This is why God speaks to us individually through his word. If we're reading as if he's talking to us today. He talked to me a lot through here. Come to me. I am the cornerstone. Don't reject me. I am the one that you need to take refuge in. Don't turn to men. Don't turn to the worldly people. Come to me. Pray with me. And love the sheep that will eventually come to your fold, to your re, you know, your retreat home, your healing place. Love them like I love my sheep. Don't do it for pay. (laughs) God, you are something else. You are something else. So today, if you don't have the daily readings, please grab your Bible. Even go online. You may not have to have a Bible physically in your hands. Maybe you don't. But the Bible is out on that there internet. So look at some verses, look at a chapter, look at some gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I mean, you know, you don't have to do the old open up the book, the Bible book and point to a verse. But you can. Just ask God to speak to you. You have to read as if God is talking to you. All right, let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of faith. We know that there is no salvation other than through belief, love, and conforming our lives to Jesus Christ. 
Thank you for reminding us today in your word that he is where we need to take refuge, that we need to turn to him in prayer, in silence, and ask him to guide our lives. Thank you again for reminding us that he is the cornerstone of our life, that everything we build in our lives, physical, spiritual, emotionally, that we need to build it on him. Then we will have a strong, secure house to live our lives, a strong, secure prayer life, peace that surpasses all understanding if we turn to Jesus and offer up our sufferings and unite them to him on the cross. Lord, please help us remember this. Jesus, come into our hearts in a huge way. Mary, take our left hand and guide us. Holy Spirit, your beloved spouse, take our right hand and lead us to Jesus, where we will find healing. We will find peace and joy and love in all circumstances. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this gift of faith. Now we will pray for all of the souls that have departed from us on this earth by name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Jesus, in your holy, powerful, loving, merciful name, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is talking to you all the time through his word. I beg all of you, no matter where you're at with the Bible, your understanding about what's going on in the parables or, you know, chronologically, whatever, maybe you're clueless. Just read it as if he is speaking to you. And yes, if you don't know what's going on, get guidance. Get guidance from the church fathers and priests and people who can pass down the Greek translation. There's a reason why we have the church, so that it's governed and we all follow the same thing. And we don't let any man or woman change up the rules, right? Those commandments are commands, not suggestions. And we don't change with the times. This is why I am so in love with the Catholic faith, because I didn't get a choice. <laughs> I knew what the teachings were. I knew what was wrong, what was right. And I don't get to say, well, I know this person who happens to be homosexual, or I know this person who is considering abortion, or I know this person who is trying to cut off their boobs and their private parts and be another, but I know this person and I love this person and how you can still love the person. You got to hate the sin, but you have to know why. And that's part of the journey is being able to say why things aren't 
correct because they are disordered. God is a God of order. I mean, look around you. The trees, they go dormant in the winter. They bloom and they have seeds and they drop them in the spring. Then they, you know, maybe flower or they, maybe they flower in the spring too, but they grow more green and they're taking root more. Same with the animals. The animals have instincts to multiply, to reproduce. They know when the seasons are changing that they have to go scurry and grab nuts and bring food. Some of them go into hibernation. And all of this is on purpose. God does not make mistakes. There's a man, there's a woman, and they were made to complement one another and to procreate in the sacrament of marriage. Marriage is a sacrament in the church. You're not just marrying someone else. You are marrying Jesus and the church and their teaching so that you can live a holy life, reproduce, create other Jesuses, and be different in this world because Satan is the ruler of the world here. Just like you wouldn't put a forkful of food into your ear, Your ear is created to hear. You wouldn't take a glass of wine and pour it into your eye to drink it because your eye is made to see. Kind of gather what I'm talking about here? God has a purpose and a meaning and an order to everything. And Satan has perverted that. Sex is a beautiful thing between a married man and woman. Why should we not have sex before marriage or with other people while we're married or even watching pornography? Because it hurts us. We are now an object and we're using other people for pleasure. And then let's not forget Why do we have abortion? Because people are having sex with people that they're not married to, that they don't love, that they're supposed to procreate with. That whole promiscuity aspect of life. Then all of a sudden, whoops, we got pregnant. I don't want the baby. I'm going to kill the baby. Look, it took me a long time to get there with with the abortion. It's not easy, but as I did a podcast the other day, I don't know how many days ago, our choices have consequences. This is why God tells us how to live because it protects us from all of this pain, this anguish. It frees us from the sin so that we can be who we are called to be, sober, loving, People And I, you know, I know that God in the Bible, and it's a Catholic teaching, by the way, we can have wine. (laughs) It's not a problem if it's not a problem for you. I can't tell you how much better my life is not drinking, not smoking. I did a video yesterday. By the way, there's two videos that you should check out on my YouTube channel. Number one is the Saturday with Kendra and how Mary is every single one of our mothers, especially the Christians. We have to look at how awesome she is, how she is sinless. She is a virgin, that she was chosen by God. And we talk a little bit about the rosary and why the rosary is biblical. It's the angelic salutation that St. Gabriel came down and spoke those words to her. And then there's another one with me all sweaty. I'm looking away from the camera. I'm so mad. I wanted to do it really quick before I got into prayer because last night I worked out hard at seven o'clock. And if I were drinking, if I were smoking, there's no way I would be working out at seven o'clock. And then I was rolling right into my evening prayer, which starts at eight I pray with Father James Parker. He's got a YouTube channel. It's called FR for Father. 
James Parker. And that's about an hour and 15 minutes and then boom, I am out like a light. So check out those two videos because my life is so different and stress relief is the way it should be in my life now. I am turning toward exercise, walking, lifting weights, building muscle. So that stress, which I am under, I cast it away (laughs) as often as I can. By the way, stress is a spirit. So cast it out in the name of Jesus Christ. I renounce the spirit of stress. And then don't forget to have the Holy Spirit to come into you and say, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, fill me with your peace. So we can pray stress out, but our bodies are made to move and to work. It's not drugs, alcohol, porn, mindless hours of watching stupid TV that's relieving the stress. It's actually harming our bodies. Okay. I'm super happy about my Sunday so far. Got up, had my French press coffee. That's a new thing that I'm trying out. Very cool. I'm no longer using my Cuisinart drip coffee. I feel there's this, I don't know what I want to say, like this process, this beauty about boiling my water in this little kettle that has a really cute, you know, nozzle and pouring it into the French press and then watching it and waiting. Sometimes I look at the little coffee grounds floating down to the bottom. Meanwhile, I get my pot out and I fill, I fill it with coconut uh, milk and heavy whipping cream. And then I put in my iodine and my selenium, my copper, all of my um, electrolytes, which is magnesium, potassium, and salt. Then I get a pat of butter and I throw that in there. (laughs) A little bit of cinnamon. And then while my French press is getting ready, I heat that up and then I combine them. And it's about two big coffee cups of coffee. Because when I used to make it out of my machine, you know, my regular coffee maker, I would almost have three quarters of a pot of coffee and I would drink it all. I don't think that's very healthy to have that much caffeine. I did that yesterday, by the way. I went out after mass. I had my two cups in the morning during prayer. Then I went to mass and then afterwards I met people for more coffee. I brought my own cream, funny kind of thing, and I drank and drank and drank more coffee. And I could tell that my body was depleting magnesium. Magnesium is such a supplement. We must supplement our bodies with magnesium. Why? Because it's not in the soil anymore. And our water is treated so poorly that it's not in our water anymore. We're not out there drinking out of the spring, which is where it's going to be. So it's really important to supplement your body with magnesium, especially if you drink coffee, because you're just sucking it right out of your body. And None of the plants have the magnesium that they're supposed to because the soil is over farmed. There's like, you have to add so much magnesium to your soil. And I guarantee you that the farmers aren't doing that. Magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. It's critical. And you may find that your, your mind is more clear. Your body has more energy that your joints don't hurt and your immune system is supplemented, it's awesome. Okay, now I'm just (laughs) rambling here. Oh, I love you all so, 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 so much. I cannot tell you how grateful I am to speak with you every single day. Every single day. That will change one day when I have that retreat home. I'll probably only do it Monday through Friday because retreats will be on the weekends, but I'm telling you, Oh, I hope that you enjoy my journey and hopefully learn from my mistakes, from my epiphanies, from the beautiful graces that are pouring out in my life, the days in which I'm 
a little bit nervous and scared. And how do I deal with it? Because every day is different. If someone asks you, so how's it going? And you reply with, oh, same old, same old. You are not walking with God. Every single day is different. If you're paying attention to what God is telling you through people in your family, through nature around you, through his word, through you talking to him all day, life is never same old, same old. And I want that for you. All right, you get out that Bible and read it and think about him talking directly to you in your circumstances today. Have a beautiful Lord's Day. I'm going to get ready and go to Mass. Receive Jesus into my soul, my mind, and my body. I'm so blessed, so grateful. And I'm going to try and not do too much and relax today. Although I am going to go for a walk, no doubt. And maybe do lifting on my body. But this is what my body likes now. It needs it. You know what I mean? The more you are in motion the more you stay in motion. Soul, mind, and body people have a blessed and inspired day.